Hey guys, this is Matt Core from ControlPaint.com, and today let's paint a tire. Just like our spatula before it, this is going to be an example of how to put together various techniques that I've already taught and use them in a sort of real world workflow. But because it is such a detailed shape, let's break it into two videos. The first video is just going to address the major masses, and in the next video we'll talk about applying cool realistic details. So anytime I paint, I want to make things as easy for myself as possible, and really a little bit of planning can be better than a lot of painting. And with this tire, the danger is looking at that tread pattern and saying, oh no, this is a really complicated shape, and then sort of drawing slowly and carefully, when what we want to do is have a loose gestural feel. So what I'm going to do is paint it as if it has no tread pattern, and then later apply the tread. So if you can envision it with no tread pattern, it's essentially a cylinder, or rather a group of cylinders. And what that means for me is I can use the locked transparent pixels trick and just make some quick circles. And we can agree that ellipses are challenging. So here I'm using the free transform tool to help me put some quick vector ellipses into shape. Because they're vector, I can push them around as much as I want and they won't degrade. And I'm just sort of giving them a temporary gray value just so I can see where one stops and the next one begins. I'm using the layer stacking order to help me align my shapes. But really what I'm doing is just blocking in the shape phase, forgetting about lighting, forgetting about texturing, just giving myself some hard lines to work inside of. And again, because they're all vector, it's very easy for me to push and pull to get everything looking just right. But then eventually I get to the point where my shapes are fine. So then I'm going to select all the shapes, rasterize them, and then lock transparent pixels. Now this should sound a little familiar if you've watched the video on how to make a spatula. But once the layers have locked transparent pixels and my shapes are all locked down, now I get to start having fun. Because what we're going for is a very loose, gestural look. And it can be a challenge if you're a beginner trying to find that balance between loose and gestural and just plain messy. We don't want messy. But as you can see here, I'm painting with big strokes and a textural brush, but I'm staying inside of those nice hard edges. It was that slow process where I set up my shapes in the first place that's now allowing me to really be sort of loose and free and to just have fun with the painting. Now you'll notice I'm not starting with one shape and rendering it all the way through. I'm jumping around from shape to shape. And a really handy way to do this is if you have the move tool selected and you hold down the control key, any layer that you click on will immediately be selected. So I can just click anywhere in the big shape that I want to paint. It will select that layer for me. I don't have to go to the layer stack. And then I can switch back to the brush tool and keep painting. So in this way, I can really jump around from shape to shape, painting with enthusiasm and not worrying about going outside of the lines. In my mind, it's this phase of the painting that really makes keyboard shortcuts important because the first half was admittedly pretty boring. What you're doing is sort of mechanical, doesn't really feel like painting, but it allows you to do this second half, which is very loose and fun. But it's a lot more loose and fun if you don't even have to click on any menus at all. Because if you know keyboard shortcuts and it just starts to feel like muscle memory, this gets really interesting. It becomes much more like a stream of consciousness, you get into a flow state, and nothing's getting in your way. So the first half of the painting was sort of setting up my rules, and now I just get to go have fun and play around. But finally, we are left with a fully rendered basic tire. I say basic because it doesn't have any treads yet, but we'll put in all those cool little surface details in the next video. So to be able to paint like this, you're going to need to know the fundamental pieces, the first of which is visual simplification. It was looking at a complicated shape and sort of thinking of a strategy to make the painting a little bit easier. The next part was setting up my shapes by using vector shape layers and using the special properties of the free transform tool. And then finally using lock transparent pixels to be able to paint with big strokes without going outside of the lines. So if any of these techniques are new to you, make sure to follow the links at the bottom of the post and learn about them. So have fun doing studies and thanks for coming to the site guys.